Hello. Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi. We are very excited to share uh, Farmer Nancy's wisdom with you. Uh, we are putting garden beds to bed and starting to put our coats on. We're out in our harvest pavilion thinking about fall and what that really means for farmers in the fall is that they're actually thinking about spring. Right. You're ready for hot cocoa and some seed catalogs? Yes, and also planting by the moon. Oh yeah, what is it's a it's a new moon. It's a, yeah, yeah, we're we're getting into the um, hunter's moon. Hunter's right. moon is next Friday. Oh, cool. full moon is next Friday. Full moon's next Friday. Full moon's next Friday. Shows you what I know. I'm just thinking about hot chocolate and seed catalogs. But you and Kieran, our farm flower director, have already done what? Lots of things. We've ordered a lot of bulbs. We ordered bulbs. And we have a new wall that we're going to plant bulbs along. So when people pull in to park, oh, this yeah, yeah. wall will have bulbs. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have to dig up our dahlias. Our dahlias are blooming beautifully right now. But when it gets cold, we're going to have to dig up the dahlias. And it is her face. <laughs> and uh, put them to bed in some <clears throat> peat moss mm -hmm. and store them over the winter. So there's a lot of digging up of things. Um, and also, I had a soil test done and my soil is kind of alkaline. So I am putting down sulfur mm -hmm. to help the soil uh, get back to its right pH. Nice. Well, that is one of the big things we want to talk to you about is not only the plants you can order and getting ready for spring, but also what you can do right now to keep your soil really healthy because our favorite thing to talk about is soil health. And if your soil is healthy, then your crops are healthy. And we can get super scientific if you want. Um, so you can send questions and comments and, and send that to us. Or you can join us for the year. So we also want to roll out a brand new program that we're going to tell you about at the end. Yeah. Where you can like hang out with her, <laughs> pick her brain. And not just for someone with you know huge tracts of land. We are all about access and crops and pots and grow on a tomato on your back patio, you still want to think about the health of the soil in that pot. Or even even a community garden. Oh yeah, yeah. Or or you know, maybe the neighbor down the street and you could join together and they have a little bit of land and and so you can uh grow something there. Yeah. With them. And so for those that know us, we like to chat and tell stories. We call mom mom is the queen of hunkering down and chatting with people. So we actually made a presentation to stay focused. We know your time is important. So we want to share Firing Farms' path to sustainable growth and how we want to make it accessible for everybody. I'm going to attempt to share things here. We're going to share screen, share on the screen, which gets me this. And then we get the slideshow. And yes, we're recording. Cool, cool, cool. So you should see on your screen our our new logo as of this year. And we're going to talk to you about how anybody can have an access to growing something sustainably in whatever setup they have. Who are you? Well, I uh, have a lot of background in home ec and back in Ohio, I had my own landscaping business, but it was really hard to grow things because you have Ohio State and Big Ag and Scots and I wanted to do things native and organic and so I ended up moving to Connecticut and found NOFA which is the Northeast Organic Farmers Association and I took every class seminar that I could and so this was in 2005 that we moved and in 2009 I said to Aaron we need to grow our own food mm -hmm. and we need to eat <laughs> healthy and and have be organic and grow sustainable. And I learned about the um, Korean uh, method of farming along with biodynamics. I kind of incorporate both of those and in how I grow. And the big thing is the soil health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and I'm her daughter. So I apprentice with her and she's trained me as an herbalist. Um, we both are reflex, uh, re Reiki masters and I am certified in reflexology aromatherapy. Uh, and aromatherapy. So how plants and our relationship to plants and the natural world is healing. And we're part of nature as, as animals. Um, but also have a 20 year career in reproductive health care. And so really bringing in the stuff that's really valuable about Western medicine and blending that with what's super valuable about plant medicine um, and trying to meet people where they're at. And I've also learned to brag that I'm good at talking about the stuff that maybe is hard to talk about and making a space that's comfortable. So uh, we're super excited to share this with you. We're three generation farms. So we're Train and Zephyrus and Kieran, and they may not be on the video, but shout out to Bruce as our facilities tractor manager, and Jeremy uh, for just helping with his organizational skills and thought partner and sort of project advisor. Um, you know, so we're all all involved. All in it together. His yeah. parents are very helpful and supportive, and we have a huge community which we'll talk about as well. So we've learned so much from so many of you. Um. But the biggest thing, you know, as we were putting this together, that we want to talk about being a farmer, but feel like farmer isn't totally accessible for everybody. So I looked it up. One of the dictionaries says a person engaged in agriculture, raising living organisms for food or raw materials is a farmer. So if you've oh. ever planted something and everybody's like, oh, I don't have a green thumb or my thing died. I'm sure all of you can think of something that you have grown even for a couple weeks. Um, and we have so many programs and so many young people on our land. And when they plant a seed and they see it sprout, even if it's in an egg container, farmer, they were a farmer. Yeah. So you can be a farmer in your kitchen with like the basil you bought at Whole Foods. It's on your you know, sink for a week, on your back deck. I know Jeremy's mom buys our seedlings and then distills her back deck with crops and pots and we go out and harvest you know the rosemary right there we'll talk more about community gardens there's some really great community gardens near us um, we know folks that are in the community garden Aaron Street community garden in Middletown um, and you know we've given talks and supported my my favorite book is crops and pots I just think that's fun to say mom has it look at this with her props we will have to stop sharing so people can see it hold on Oh, crops and pots. Is it going to show backwards? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this says crops and pots. And this is Bob Purnell. But I think it's like, a, this is like Reader's Digest. I mean, this is yeah. tried there's, and true right here. Of, I have six books here <laughs> yeah. that I could show you, but we don't need yeah. to show you. That's okay. Well, no, we got we to gotta cite our resources. Right. Um, and then having land, whether that's a backyard we are are privileged and and blessed to have um, about well we have about four acres. What would you say is under production? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half, and we're feeding forty families, you know, throughout the season and selling to a few restaurants and and you know ourselves. Yeah. So we go how 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 many times a week to eat spaghetti? <laughs> Three or four. <laughs> yeah. Well, our family we definitely have it once a week. So if you did once a week, that's 52 weeks of spaghetti, 52 meals. Well, spaghetti, you're talking about tomato sauce. Yeah. So then we plan it out and we're like, how many tomatoes do we need to grow now so we can have spaghetti at least 52 times a yep. year? Yep. Oh, now I can't go forward. There we go. We've said this, we're committed to growing the list of nutritious food. We try, we abstain, no, to synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides. We want our techniques to really be sustainable um, and really think about the land, our natural resources, our water. You know, I, I will say that I was an advocate for not tapping our maple trees this past season because the weather was just so unpredictable and it just felt confusing when I like walked the land. Well, we were in the drought last summer. Yeah. So you didn't have the water. The water table was low too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So really trying to be in touch and, and, acknowledging what's happening around us and how we can be responsive, but also giving thanks and gratitude to the people before us. So the family that lived here before us, uh, TJ, TJ and Prudence, um, Taylor Palmer, and then also even before that, the first 
relationships with the land that we know of are Quinnipiac and Wabunk. So starting all of our programs, starting our days, you know, thinking about their relationship to land and, and how we can learn from that. What's our relationship? How can we undo the harm that our ancestors um, as white colonizers you know, caused to the land? So it's it's involved in all of that. Um, and we have to give thanks to our community, folks that have learned from us. Um, so Talia and Stacy and Terry were some examples when we were putting this together. Talia's over in Middletown and got some seedlings and said, what is going on with my cucumbers there in the middle? And then we gave advice and we talked and we tried to figure it out. And it was a drought. It was yeah, water. water at that time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and then she ended up with a bounty sending us. I love, we love plant photos from your sink. Like absolutely love your babies and your pets, but we also love a good tomato. Um, and then Stacy was part of, or is part of um, cultivating justice, uh, chicken, ch chicks program. And one of her chicks was a rooster and Middletown says no roosters. So she's like, what do I do with my rooster? So she came, That's gave us chipmunk rooster. right here in the middle. Proud, he 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 is in charge. He's destroyed your Tokyo Bacana. Yes. <laughs> Soil health though, we'll talk about that. Um, And we gave her a hen in return. So now I have a rooster that wakes me up, but she now has a hen and can have eggs. Um, I don't know if you want to add why we let the chickens in the garden. Well, the chickens, <laughs> the chickens, fly and so now that yeah, we've, better we've harvested most of it they've learned to fly and so now they're cleaning up the garden for me there you go yeah and pooping yeah that's what yeah. people don't like to talk about but yeah. you know chicken poop is very helpful it's very high I actually had, i'm putting you on the spot but i had a curiosity because that area is where the eggplant was planted and wasn't growing very well like could they be like getting rid of those little pests of egg like it good to have them in there oh well it's always good in fact yeah. another farmer has a, a whole carriage thing and he moves his chickens mm -hmm. on the beds no the chickens are, are so that may be how we tried eggplant there a couple times they got pests came and, so now like literally where that chicken is standing yeah could be helping with eggplants next year i think it was <clears throat> the problem with the with my soil was too alkaline and mm. so even though I started the plants in, indoors and they were healthy, when they got into the soil, they couldn't pick up the nutrients. And so the pests took over. So remind me, alkaline is not acidic. That's correct. It's basic. It's basic. Okay. So and you need most, to add acid. Yeah, most plants want more of an acidic soil. Okay. Um, cool. So they can pick up the nutrients in the soil. Nice. And then Terry Terry right there um, has been an apprentice, a mentor in our Nature Connection programs. Huge shout out to everyone outside that, that we run programs with as a nonprofit in the Middletown, Middlesex area. And we're one of the host sites for their programs. And then she's also bringing her friends, teaching her own classes, working with Community Park Sustainability Project, uh, you know, well, learning she took her our herb, whole yeah. herbal class and, and is an apprentice with mom. And, and she makes her own lotions and stuff. So, yeah, yeah she's. Yeah. But yeah. So, I'm going to stop sharing because we have props and I don't know what we're recording anymore. So, what we want to talk to you about is garlic. <laughs> yes. So, why do we grow garlic? Because it's really healthy mm -hmm. and it gets you through the winter you can make garlic syrup you can <clears throat> make um garlic oil and um you need to eat garlic every day mm -hmm. to to get through the winter and the colds it's it's antimicrobial anti-antiseptic garlic is amazing and why, what does garlic have to do with soil? Like, Well, it's going to, it's going, we're going to plant it now. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to, we have to wait till the temperature of the soil gets to be below 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And we're going to plant it and the roots will start growing now. You have okay. to grow the roots now. Mm -hmm. And so then over the winter, the roots grow. And then when the temperature of the soil gets above 40, mm -hmm. the green part starts growing. Mm -hmm. And I grow hardneck 
Okay. Only because it's the easiest to grow. Mm -hmm. I think it's easiest to grow in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. So now in a month, we will probably be popping the garlic, which means we pop oh, it. She did one. Oh, she did. She popped it. We like so, to pop our garlic on our resource book. Yeah. So now we have the cloves. Mm -hmm. And you usually, the, these are really nice cloves. But you pop them the day before you're going to plant them. And then I dip them in alcohol because there are some bacteria that could be in the in the garlic. Mm -hmm. uh, I just dip them for like 10 minutes and then they dry them. Mm -hmm. And then you heart plant them the next day. Cool. Now let me share screen again. Keep us on track. So we want to support you in things like this and growing your own garlic. You know, whether that's in a pot on your back patio. We just got some raised beds from uh, our friend James. Life works. And there's some numbers. I'll look it up, James. I'll do a better shout out in a second. Um, built some raised beds for us because we want to have 2022. I think it is too. Um, have access for folks that maybe have limited mobility or it's hard to bend over, but we're thinking about starting garlic in them um, to keep our soil healthy. The other thing I want to add is if you want to grow garlic though, you need to have organic garlic. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't want to just go to the local grocery store and get some garlic because it may not grow. Yeah. You need to have it needs to be organic. And if you want some garlic, you can always come to the farm and yeah. get some from buy some from me. Yeah, you know, we got buckets of garlic. Yeah. Um, but again, before before you put the garlic in the ground, you gotta really think about your soil and what's going on. So this is a very elaborate, colorful photo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you wanna elaborate on it or just know soil health is important. Yeah. Well it as you can see, all of this um, helps your roots. And so um, it, you have to have the right pH. And, and if you have the soil right, then the roots can take up the nutrients, which are your nitrogen and, and these, and um, help the plant grow. Yeah. The calcium, oh, nitrogen. I think I have a drawer thing here. Look at this. You can oh. try this on. So this, you want to help. Well, that's getting rid of those. Oh, get rid of those bad. Get rid of those. You want to help these. Yeah. Oh, this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is good. And yeah. that's going to improve your crop mm -hmm. yield. Yeah. And, so, the, and the uptake in the plants. The nitrogen mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. the yeah, carbon. Yes. Cool. Which that's also, you want to keep the carbon in the soil. We talked about the carbon losing. Um, and it's really important to have your soil covered mm -hmm. um, we like to say no bare soil yeah no bare soil. and other ways to do that are just we call it lasagna kind of methods yes so you want to keep so what we just did in the uh new raised beds is we put down cardboard this first layer then we put down um straw and leaves and and uh i call it mulch. wood chips you call it wood chips wood chips wood chips wood, wood, wood chips, chips. And we layered it and now we have the topsoil on. So thank you, Angel, for, for filling them for us. And we're going to put some garlic in to start that process. So something's growing in that soil. And you need to think about it. it's fall. And what happens in the fall is the leaves fall. Leave your leaves. And so we tend to, a lot of people rake the leaves and put them in bags <laughs> and have the town pick them up. We'll take them if you don't. <laughs> yeah. so, Technically, <clears throat> you want to rake the leaves and either bring them here or we'll come get them. Or if you have a lawnmower, you can mow them and bag them up and then put them on your garden bed. Mm -hmm. The leaves are an excellent resource. So you would plant the garlic and then put leaves all around as well. And then that's on not, top. leaves is not bare soil. Leaves correct? is not bare soil. I no. put maybe three or four inches of leaves after I've planted the garlic on the soil. Yeah, cool. My other example that I loved and I learned it back in the spring is we did cabbage and chamomile together. And we'll talk about plants that like to grow with each other. And then you put 
grass clippings down. Yeah. And we didn't have to weed that really. I mean, right. they, that was great. Right. But in the fall, whatever you're planting, you want to, if you don't have garlic to put in the ground, think about a cover crop like oats. Oh, yeah. Well, the leaves would probably be the easiest thing for most people. Mm -hmm. Um, Because oats will have to grow. Buckwheat, buckwheat will grow easier too. Mm -hmm. But you have to go to the store and buy this seed. Yeah. And what we did was plant green beans. We did. We have lots of green beans. And, um, green beans on here. I, cool. I was planting the green beans just to cover the soil. Mm -hmm. And we've had such a warm fall that we now have green beans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the green so beans many. are going to be a cover crop. Yeah. So the other thing <clears throat> is you want to do a rotation of your of your so if you have a different pots you would mm -hmm. have different pots and you would move them to different things if you have a plot of land oops go back you're talking your tomatoes are a heavy feeder and so after your tomatoes you want to plant your beans because your beans put a lot of nutrients tomatoes back in the soil then beans yeah then what and then you go to and i got to look at my hand yeah, I had this all written down. You're fine. Go to squash. Mm -hmm. No, you go to onions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the squash. Then the squash. Then I go back to tomato. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So we're going to start with garlic in a couple spaces. So then the next year after we harvest the garlic, we're going to put things in the squash family in next. Right. Cool. Right. And beans, though, it's pretty, like, beans, beans are pretty well, universal. You could even put beans after the onions. You could put beans, beans or beans, peas. the magical fruit. Beans or right. peas are yeah. all <laughs> nitrogen fixing. <laughs> so they all help. Yeah. Yeah. Nitrogen was on the other chart, so that's perfect. Nice. All right. Cool. Yeah. And then this, you always like to talk about the roots. So because we're putting garlic in, we're putting it in, we're going to dig it up gently. We try not to disturb too many of the roots, even though that was my question, like garlic is a root. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you're putting in your tomatoes, like right now, I have, my tomatoes have died. I am not pulling the plant. Oh, right, right, right. Out of the ground. I, I feel like people need to off. see your face to do that. Say that again. Tomatoes have died. Tomatoes have died. So then you cut them off at the ground. Leave them. And you cut up the stalks mm -hmm. and you can put them on the on your bed. And then you can put your leaves on top. And why? Soil health. Soil health. Yeah. You don't want to disturb the soil. Mm -hmm. So it's the same if same with peppers. You know, people say, Well, I gotta clean up my garden, and they go in and they pull everything off the yeah. garden. So there's the soil bare with no roots, no nothing. Yeah. And the roots over the winter will disintegrate and help the soil. Yeah. And uh, so good. you don't want to pull the roots. Yeah. So big summary, the healthier the soil, the more nutrients and greater density of vitamins and minerals in your food. My example is you cut an apple, watch how long it takes to turn brown. If it takes a while, you're kind of surprised. Oh, it hasn't turned brown. It has a lot of vitamins and minerals. So it's probably grown in healthier soils, probably organic. A higher bricks or sugar content. So we can test that. And that's something you can learn how to do from us. So don't give away all your treats. I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a healthier thing. So you can test that and see how healthy uh, over time your, your, your food is. There's also this other component. And again, we do a lot of um, connection in nature, you know, breathing the fresh air. Again, shout out to everyone outside. Um, but there's a lot of research that shows that touching the soil has great benefits, interacting with mother nature, you know, so that's again, why we have our farm open to community folks coming in and learning from us, helping us um, and doing that in exchange for vegetables. And we know that not everybody has, has access to all of these things. Um, and if you want to wear gloves, that's okay too. You're outside breathing fresh air. Well, some people go barefoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's a whole other. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Whenever you're doing your grounding. Yeah. So this I don't expect you to read, but it's really saying that healthy soil creates healthy plants. 
that are less vulnerable to pests and disease. You know, so really think about this companion planting, like I was saying, um, the uh, chamomile like to grow with the cabbage. Yeah. You know, think about the food you like to eat. You know, you want to make a salsa, peppers like to grow with tomatoes. They the other thing up. too to add is flowers. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That well, that's a sacrificial the whole well, other thing. I don't know. Maybe the, we should leave that as like a dun dun dun. dun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One sentence about flowers for you. Oh, here, they, these oh wait, two. you have to see. She's got props, y'all. I don't think you have this. <laughs> I don't. She's she's holding up a whole other chart. See, this is the knowledge you'll get if you join us. But nasturtiums mm -hmm. and marigolds mm -hmm. plant for Ooh. all over your garden. Help with all kinds of pests. And you can eat the marigolds and you can eat the nasturtiums. The nasturtiums and the nasturtium leaves have a peppery taste. Mm. So they're also edible. So you're cutting your lettuce and you can add flowers to yourself. Yeah. And the flowers, sometimes the pests, depending on the timing, go to yep. the flowers first and then you plant your veggies because now the pests are full. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. Okay, that's all we're going to say. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> to be continued. If you join us, um, oh, there she is. <laughs> so, <laughs> why do we grow? There's more steps between you and your food source. There's more chances for contamination. You know? mm -hmm. So she literally, we grew these beans, we picked these beans. People came and picked them up the same day. Um, you know, and you can come meet us and see what we're doing. Ask questions. Well, we had, I had little young children yesterday yeah. helping pick beans, and. One of the little girls had a, a pocket and she had it all stuffed with green beans. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm going to eat these on the way home. <laughs> and well, she, that's the thing. she took her whole pocket of fresh green beans yeah. home. And she told me, she said, last night, mom made rice and beans and the beans were from a can and they were soggy. <laughs> well, that's part of the cheesy songs I sing. Yeah, I mean. but, but still, it was like, these are a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll lead anybody through. And all of a sudden they have a bowl and they've cut stuff and they're eating it. And like, well, what is this? And like, you just ate cabbage. I did? I don't like cabbage. I'm like, well, now you do. Yeah. You know, so again, being involved in that and, and having that fresh food, I think is really important. So we can help with that. Um, and we also really are proponents. So it's very hard in strawberry, not strawberry season, but knowing where you are on the land, your relationship with the land, what is the healthiest thing, what's the plant doing, you know, so we're eating seasonally. So yes, yeah, strawberries are grown year-round, though it has been a weird, uh, there were some. Well, that's an, that's a different, that's a strawberry that's an indeterminate strawberry and it grows all summer. Oh, see, I just learned something too. You I have ate two it. kinds of strawberries. You have, this, <laughs> you have the June strawberries and then you have the strawberries that'll grow um, oh, we have those. Yes, we have those. Oh, great. Well, again, we but have strawberries on your hands. If you want strawberries <laughs> in the winter time, you make strawberry jam. Well, yeah. So that's we also could teach you how to can and all these things yeah. passed down from her mom and aunt and all the wise the wise history. But yeah, so really thinking about what's our season. So we're in that autumn time. What's our soil doing so we can get ready for winter? Jump over to spring. You know what? What have to dig do? a lot of things right now. Yeah, like the first red. Oh, yeah. So we want you to join us. We've learned a little bit about garlic. You can plant your own garlic. Our new exciting thing, y'all, is we have different offerings. So you could have a lot of time with mom, um, some time with me over Zoom. We'll hold some classes a few times a month for six months. Um, get advice, uh, do some learning on your own, You know, have a tour of the farm, and that's our seed package level. Um, so you can email and sign up uh, to join us for six months, which is this is the time to do it. What's your plan? What advice do we have? Um, how you can start to soil test. You can think about what's growing in, in your garden, how you can get leaves from your neighbors. All that fun stuff is our level one seed package. And so that's um, some installments that you would pay us monthly. Or you can join us for the whole year, which is also that knowledge and Zoom classes and a guidebook but personalized one-on-one -on -one with mom. She will come to your space within reason. I know some of you are joining from far away. You can walk us around with a Zoom stick or- oh, but maybe yeah. I could go to the Bahamas. 
Oh yeah, if anybody wants her to <laughs> advise on the Bahamas, okay. No, I'm just <laughs> you buy her ticket. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, but you'd have consulting uh, one on one. Um, you can also come to the farm. You'd be a member of our CSA and get vegetables from us. Um, and that's our sprout package. Uh, so I will have a link in the chat to sign up for these two options. Um, and we have payment plans available. Oh, seeds are falling on the Harvest Pavilion. Um, yeah, we're super excited to have you join us and, and tap into the wisdom yeah. here of this awesome farm her lady um, with our packages that we have available. And we'll work it out with you. Yeah. Anything it's else exciting. you want to say to your fans? Mm. You get a lot of followers on Instagram when I follow you around with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just fun. It's really important to connect with the earth mm -hmm. and, and yeah, yeah, the herbs and the vegetables and the flowers. I love, I love your garlic. <laughs> See dahlias and garlic? See? Yeah. We'll dig them up. And you can eat the dahlias. I know. You were telling me about that. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. yeah, see, I'm learning things and I live with our people. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Let us know how we can support and help you. And we also will have regular CSA openings. So yeah. people pick up their veggies from us, um, May ish through now ish, each week and get a share of the vegetables. Um, we have payment plans available for that, work shares or, you know, and herb classes. And herbal classes with Herbal Bones Art uh, and Wellness with Meg. She's our fellow herbalist. And so that will have signups for the youth programs with everyone outside. Yeah, so much. And I forgot to thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Glad right. you came. You we're all, yeah. all welcome on the Look land. Forward to seeing you. Yeah, if you're hiking the trails, Middlesex Land Trust, got to thank them too. Yeah. Yeah. Stop in. Bye. <laughs>